And we are back. Um, as we were just dissecting um, why video game awards are awful, um, how about everyone's favourite video game of the year? What has been your personal favourite game of the year? Oh, who wants to start? I'll let TB go first. To play? Or oh, that's, that's nice. I, I'm supposed to be releasing my top 10 games of 2011, so it's going to ruin everything. No, and if I, you I don't can, want to, don't. <laughs> I, I will happily list three games that I really enjoyed playing that are contenders, but I won't tell you which one I actually is. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you my nominations for Game of the Year, but I'm not going to give out the award. In terms of like pure storytelling, I have to say that Bastion really impressed me. Uh, Bastion is such a good action RPG. It's got a very unique kind of storytelling mechanic. It's a really colorful game. It's the first game from a company called Supergiant, where basically a bunch of developers came together just to make this one game. Greg Kasavin, who is sort of headed it up, sort of quit everything he was doing and just went and put his money into this game and says, we're going to make this one game. And it turned out to be a fantastic title. Really, really good for people that like Diablo games, the kind of like Zelda-style games, good amount of skill involved, good amount of content. And you had this Western guy who was commentating everything. It was amazing, amazing. Yeah, so good. And then so the I'd... kid fell to his death. Just yeah, pretty me. much. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he got a bit sarcastic about it as yeah, well. Yeah. It's like, long way down, probably don't want to do that. <laughs> <Things like that. laughs> it was epic. Then, Yes, so good. I would actually like that guy to follow me around and commentate my life. That, that <laughs> there should be a service you can hire that guy for a day. Or, or actually just have him do an answer phone message. That would be pretty good. And ha but have him commentate the message that they are about to leave. That you're, on to, <laughs> you're on to something. What we need to do is we need to get that guy to do a sat-nav recording and just have him doing the sat-nav. I'd listen to his directions all day. Oh, uh, do you want yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> I can't lose yeah. my Homer. My Homer sat nav is awesome. Aww. <laughs> Brian <laughs> Blessed sat nav is the way to go. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, Dobber, <laughs> uh, some, somebody uh, in chat kind of asked if you're doing pantomime this year with your moustache and beard. <laughs> Three Musketeers. Yeah, they're actually all doing pretty well on that front. Right. Except for Odie. Odie's, Odie's clean shaven. The rest of us are doing our hobo look. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. No <laughs> And all of that. one and one for all, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, other two games. Other two um, games. Mm, I, I think it's gonna have to be Magicka for sheer laughs. <laughs> Magicka has resulted in the hardest that I've laughed this entire year. It, as a co-op game, it has so many moments where complete fuck ups can happen that are hilariously entertaining. It, it, it's a game that almost it, it's on the edge of encouraging you to team kill on the edge of, it's never quite there but you only need a tiny little shove to actually do it and it will be hilarious regardless of how it goes I, I had the opportunity to go up to see those guys they're in a, a town that I can never pronounce because it's got some weird Swedish pronunciation but the locals call it scale hell because it is very <laughs> far up north it's very difficult to access without flying and it is cold as hell but there is a there's a big university there that has a large technology department, but the, and there's a, a game dev up there called Arrowhead. They made this game. It was just a student project. It was extremely successful for them, and it was extremely fun to play, and it was only $10. It was very, very good. It was very innovative as well. It had some really interesting combat mechanics that no one's really ever seen before. So definitely that one. And I think the last game... We're probably going to have to go indie again, actually. I'm just going to be indie, indie, indie this entire way and just say Terraria because Terraria <laughs> has provided a ton of enjoyment for me as well and is also quite innovative. A lot of people called it a Minecraft clone when it first came out, but it's with the amount of updates that they've had and how receptive they've been to feedback, they've just completely surpassed that and they've turned it into like a Metroidvania kind of game with a bit of Zelda thrown in, but also with the ability to construct stuff. So... I want to see what's going to come of Terraria in 2012, and they've already sold over a million copies, so they're doing really well. But yeah, I think that those oh, wow. three would definitely be in my nominations for Game of the Year, honestly, for games that I personally have enjoyed and played. Was Magicka actually this year? I swear down that yes, was long... Was. Really? Yeah, it wow. was. Wow. It's been a long year. Yeah, well, I thought it, it must have been very early this year, though. 
I'm pretty sure it was January or February, if I remember correctly. I'm just going to look in the uh, Wiki Wikipedia, and uh, it was January 25th, 2011. Oh, yeah, so it was there. this year. Yeah. yeah, it has had some interesting. Didn't it have like a Vietnam uh, expansion as well. It did have a Vietnam expansion. The trailer <laughs> for that was absolutely fantastic. It's had yeah, loads brilliant. of expansions. It's had loads. It's, it, the game's yeah, completely changed. Speed. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, the Vietnam expansion was kind of crappy for the price that yeah. they gave. It was overpriced for what it was. It's why the, the next expansion they brought out, which is the Cthulhu expansion, has got a lot more content in it. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. so, so very good as well. Lovecraft. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, that's really worth it. They actually just had a 75% off sale everything. I, Magicka goes on sale like every two weeks. So, <laughs> you know, just have Magicka, you might as well pick it up. It's such a good co op game. And then they added full PvP into the point where that actually became competitive and they had tournaments. There's actually a lot of strategy in the PvP, if you can believe it. It made uh, me rage so much. It was just yeah. shields and rocks. Shields and rocks. That's all you needed. <laughs> shields and rocks. Yeah, there's, it, it, there's ways and means around that, though. It's like I've watched the advanced PvPers, and the stuff that they do is actually insane. Uh, they, I can they imagine. Conjure, yeah, they conjure like hordes of zombies to deflect the rocks so they can then get around and flank and do something else. And there's resistances, and of course, there's the idea of you can get another, you can uh, cause rain on a wizard to make him vulnerable to electricity and things like that. And there's all sorts of ideas with it. It's really cool. The oh, PvP from... is pretty much kind of like. Bloodlines Champions in a way, isn't it? It's where you it got is a bit, yeah. Start. It's like Bloodlines <laughs> Champions mixed with Diablo 2's PvP, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. So, Odie, what about you? Um, well, I don't get that much to, much time to play, especially when you manage <laughs> players like Naniwa take up eight months of your life. <laughs> oh, um, oh, that's really... Uh, um, forgive Naniwa. Yeah. You are. So I, says the big sign that Tyler has. Yeah, sure. I, I, to be honest, earlier this year, I didn't really get a chance to play much at all, which is a bit disturbing. Uh, played a bit of Lucky Space on Facebook. That was quite fun. Until Moyes <laughs> overtook me, and then I got depressed. <laughs> Um, oh, no. <clears throat> to be honest, Battlefield 3, by far, it, it's fantastic. Uh, my favourite name of the year for a game is Skyrim. I know the game is great, oh, looks great, go. but it, it just sounds like <laughs> some dodgy skydiving fetish, and I, it just amuses me <laughs> oh, every time I hear it. Um, uh, <laughs> <I'm in shop. laughs> Yeah, the, f oh the first time I mentioned Skyrim uh, to Odie on uh, our Ventrilo, he uh, basically spent the next hour or two trying to make as many uh, puns as possible on it. It was uh, yeah. quite yeah. depressing. That's, that's a natural, in fact, genetic reaction for any British man. In that <laughs> so, yeah, so, that. so, yeah, my game of the year, playing Battlefield 3, for sure. Uh, yeah. Watching, because I do a lot of that. Um, League of Legends, getting introduced to that. and trying to now understand it. Um, I actually quite enjoy watching it, which is disturbing, disturbing to say, coming from me. Uh, I'm watching Starcraft, Starcraft 2. I, I love watching. I, I've still never played a game, but I want to watch it. Um, a probably, lot of people are like that. Probably because of fear of losing. I don't like losing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just. I, I've seen it. you lose. It's yes. not pretty. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. <laughs> watch yeah. me shoot this. Watch me shoot this. Get shot in the head. I'll get him next time. I'll get him next time. <laughs> How about you, Jamie? Game of the. Your favourite? Oh, it, it's a hard one. There's been so many good games and so many really bad games, but I have to go against one which everyone's going to say I'm stupid for saying, but it's got to be Dusex Human Revolution for me. It really it does. Was, it, was, it was good. It, it, it was good. I was glad that it didn't disappoint me for the most yeah. part. It was never going to be as innovative or as like much of a surprise in this day and age as what it was with the original one. So yeah, yeah. I think people kind of judged it a little bit harshly, but the game itself... Although the combat and certain balance issues, such as there was no reason for it to actually, for you to want to go around killing everybody because you got more points and it was actually better for you to actually silent kill. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff frustrated me. But overall, I like a game where I can jump in for a couple of hours a night, when I'm talking about single player games, a couple of hours a night and finish it in a couple of weeks and have a definitive end to the story. And that's the only reason why I'm not giving it to Skyrim because I think by the time I finish Skyrim, I'm going to forget what happened at the beginning. There's a lot there, Oof. isn't there? there yeah, there's an awful lot there. The, the thing that Deus Ex gets right, I suppose, is that it's got a focused story, but it's still got a lot of very open-ended hub areas. It's the yeah. same reason I think that Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is one of the best games of all time. The that's actually one of the closest of the to it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it that's is, a, That's a game I haven't heard in a while. It was it's a good a, game. It was so good, but so buggy. But it's just great to have somewhere where you can just, oh, look, there's this big hub, 
and I can just go around and explore every nook and cranny and there'll probably be something there. And that was definitely the case with Human Revolution as well. I, I think I spent 15 hours in the first area before actually that, leaving. I did about the same, yeah. It yeah. was... I, I want to do everything in these kind of games. So when Absolutely. you're doing a game like Skyrim, it's impossible almost to do... Well, it's not, but it takes you a very, very long time to be able to search everywhere, pick up everything, make everything you can make. And I don't know, both games have got problems when it comes to balancing certain issues. But no, Deus Ex, I just, I don't know how you pronounce it. Who knows how to pronounce it? Deus. 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 So not Deus. 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 Ah! That game is good. I love it. And... Even the DLC was great, so if you haven't tried it yet, you should definitely go out and try that game. Yeah, but all the DLC is pretty good, mainly because like the boss fights were probably the biggest problem yeah. that I had with that game. And, and apparently those boss fights were outsourced. That's why they were terrible. Why and would you outsource they're... boss fights? I hell if I know, mate. Hell if I know. But <laughs> apparently the guys uh, in the DLC decided, well, we're going to we're going to do a boss fight ourselves, and we're going to make it really good. So apparently the boss fight in Missing Link is awesome. But yeah, the, the boss fights, they, they were an annoying distraction, I felt, from the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the chat are saying uh, Portal 2 is going with you. Um, and it, it won, I don't know about um, that. We were at the uh, Golden Joysticks uh, not so long ago, and Portal, Portal 2 won uh, uh, the best game there. Um, I really disagree with it. It's, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a fun game and all, but like, there's nothing really to go back to after Portal come- 2 has got this little thing where it is it's unique in its own little niche part of the market where it's a good game without having any consequence. It's just a puzzle game when you break it down. As much as you want to say it's a great game with a great story, it's a puzzle game and the story is not really there. It's just a funny puzzle. It I don't I know. Think That's it also how I see outstays it. its welcome as well. Yeah. I mean, like, if you remember the first Portal, everyone loved it. I mean for God's sake, Yahtzee loved that, and Yahtzee <laughs> basically loves that and Painkiller, and that's it, you know, pretty much. So, the, the first game is a nice length for what it was. It didn't outstay its welcome, but it did have replayability as well. If you wanted to go through the custom levels, do the time trials and challenges, and speed run this day, and also I think that as far as I could tell from the original Portal, they had a lot more solutions to puzzles than Portal Two did. Portal Two, there was it was far more limiting. And the puzzles were expected to be solved in a particular way. And also, the whole GLaDOS um, humor thing, it, out, it outstayed its yeah. welcome. It, it wore itself out over the course of however many hours. The co-op campaign, I've been told, I haven't played the co-op campaign, but I've been told is really good. It is, but it is. I don't think you could ever give Game of the Year to a sequel like that, honestly, no. because like, Portal, the original Portal was just pretty much perfect, and there what isn't is really she- anything that you can improve. I think the biggest issue, quickly, on Portal 2 is that, this is my opinion, you might disagree, but because it was developed as well from the start with the consoles, I'm not saying nothing about console versus PC, but the puzzles seemed easier, and there wasn't as much Twitch reactions on your Portal shots as what there was in the original Portal, where you could I literally I think that's just, true, actually, yeah. It is. It, it was a lot more thought out than actual being able to spin around a 360, jump twice, and land through a portal, spit yourself out. Yeah, it's good out. doing that on a console. <laughs> yeah, Portal uh, Two made me dizzy. Didn't like it. Didn't oh, is that it. when you were playing at Scan on the um, the Razer? No, oh, we did oh, it there. Oh, we did it at Gadget Show, didn't we? This year. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, Razer, Razer have the Hydra there, and they just made yeah, me seasick. So didn't like that game. I, I had the problem with these. Prey. You remember that? Where the, the, yeah, that's a game that yeah, Prey used portals. Is I, that the one I, where I you literally just died for a little mini game and then came back to life? Prey was better, though, because Prey, you had gravity-bending stuff as well, so you could walk yeah. up vertically and you'd be upside down, you'd be fighting people upside down. It's really cheap, and Prey 2's coming out soon, so you should check it out, actually. That was a really old game. Like, Prey was, like, really, really old. The, the, oh, the yeah, concept yeah. The, and everything was... And they just only got it out, like... New engines, new years. engines over and over again with Prey, definitely. That, that happened so much. I remember looking at the original concepts for Prey and... I'm pretty sure they used to use the old. Un- un- they started off in the old Unreal Engine, yeah. I mean, the same one the original Deus Ex came out on, and then they they went all the way through. But it's a Doom yeah, Three, but, wasn't it? I the think yeah, I think it, it ended up being the Doom Three engine. I know it was very very shiny, so the chances are it was <laughs> yeah. probably Doom Three. Everything was coated in plastic. So uh, whatever ID Tech Four, maybe or was it even ID Tech Three? I can't remember. But ID Tech, or, or people are going to get upset that I called it ID Tech. It's ID Tech, so they claim anyway. <laughs> It's tech four. Yeah, yeah. There um, you go. Tech four. For me, uh, I, I know everyone 
as as mentioned, all the big games so far. But Shogun Total War Two was my favourite. I am. I wish I had the time to play it. I wish I did. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those games that I don't have the time to play. I actually just bought all the DLC for it because it was it was all seventy (laughs) five percent off a few days ago. In fact, no. Yes, it was yesterday up until this evening. I just bought it all and like I have all the DLC now. Doesn't mean I'm going to install the game, but I've got all the DLC. I mean, it's 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 almost perfect for me. It's, you've got a um, multiplayer campaign. You can play against your, your mates. You've got co-op as well. They were the kind of things you were missing out on for ages when you played like Rome Total War and so on. And that's like, the, and I'm um, a friend of mine who does coding, uh, who took apart pretty much every total get ga- total war game that comes out. Says that in the script files for Shogun Two. Um, there's mention of legionnaires, uh, camels, and all these things, which kind of makes me think that the next Total War title, big one at least, will be uh, Rome 2, which to anyone who's ever Maybe. played Total War is the best of them all. Rome is, I... Rome is really good. I actually preferred Medieval 2, but Rome was really good as well. The oh. problem I've got with Shogun and pretty much all the new ones is no modding support, so we don't get great stuff like the yeah. Third Age mod, the Warhammer mod, and things like mm-hmm. that. We saw for Medieval, it was really good. It'd be good to see that game with modern day stuff, though, like a modern day combat kind of thing. I'm not sure how that would work. It it wouldn't. I know. I know it wouldn't. But I'm I'm not thinking about modern day. I'm thinking more of sci-fi. Like if you were just controlling zealots or something like that. Warhammer Total War. Warhammer Forty Thousand Total War. I would actually. I think I would give my kidneys for. Actually, (laughs) I I think I would go as far as to do that. That would be wonderful. That's creative. That's not work. Yes, Chris, it is. Assembly, yeah. Total War guys, yeah. yeah. Possibly the best, one of the best developers in the UK. They're absolutely brilliant guys. Except for the fact they, they keep releasing games that don't work. That doesn't help. <laughs> but to be uh, fair, considering the complexity of it, I can't really blame them. Um, Not many PC I, I, I games work on much nowadays. Uh, on release. They, the, the problem is they don't have mod tools, mm-hmm. which is a disaster, considering Rome Total War is easily one of the most modded games I think I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So many good mods for that game. I mean, it's amazing. Um, but anyway, um, one thing we uh, touched on before was uh, you were at DreamHack. Uh, I was, yeah. Doing, yep. do, uh, coast, uh, uh, casting with um, Apollo uh, on the second stage, I believe. Yep. You were in with all Third. the vendors. Yeah. But um, how, how, what did you think of DreamHack altogether and your casting experiences? Well, I mean, DreamHack's always a really great event. The, the casting experience for us was probably more stressful than any other event, not just because it was a really good event with lots of very high-profile players and a lot of people as well. It's the biggest event that me and Apollo have actually casted. It's larger than, of course, DreamHack Summer. It's been larger than IEM. It's larger than IPL3, stuff like that. So we were there, obviously, with a really good lineup of casters as well. Taste Osis was there, Day 9, and Mr. Bitter as well. So we had a kind of like the casting royalty, the who's who of really, really good casters there. But unfortunately, the way that the stage was made our jobs quite a lot harder, honestly. We were... On the Steel Sea Ridge stage, which they thought was a good idea to put next to the Razor stand. <laughs> By the way, that was not a good idea to do. They should not have done that. The Razor guys were uncooperative, to say the least. And they caused us some problems. We were in a very loud area. Our equipment wasn't really up to snuff. It was, be- it was certainly better than I had in summer, where we had to pretty much cobble it together. But it was a fairly stressful experience for everyone. And it kind of stuck for the spectators as well, because there were only 30 seats. And there were way more people who wanted to watch it. So You were swamped. It, yeah, we're pretty much all the time we were. And it's, it's a real shame because you compare what we had. And I don't expect everything to be like Dream Arena Extreme because how the hell do you match up to that? But you compare what we had to what Dream Arena Extreme had. And you can, it's like saying, why is anyone here? Why are they not in Extreme? Because Extreme, if no one's ever been in Extreme, think of the biggest cinema you've ever been in. Twice as comfortable, thousand seats with great sound and esports on the screen all day because that's what dream arena extreme is it's such an enjoyable experience to be in and then you put a couple of benches out for the steel series arena and you know a cheapy pa and in a very noisy uncomfortable and warm area that's not an ideal spectating environment so it, it got stressful for us we did enjoy the hell out of it and we had a wonderful experience and we would absolutely love to do it again, as always. And the thing is, DreamHack are really receptive to feedback. Like, they're grown-ups. They don't get upset when we say that. We, we went to them and said, it, during the event and after the event, and I said this publicly, I, I pointed out all the faults with DreamHack, and the CEO read it, and he was really happy that I'd said it, 
And these guys are grown-ups, and they love to improve. They'll take feedback. They'll fix everything the next time. I can pretty much guarantee it. So it was an awesome event for esports in general. It was the best finals I think we've seen. Of course, I can't now say that because DRG versus MMA happened, and that was ridiculously good. But certainly after that, I think Hero versus Puma was the best finals that we've ever seen. And anyone that was in that arena, I don't think would ever disagree with me because it was an amazing epic experience. Never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> it was oh. unbelievable in a hockey stadium and everything. Just so many people watching it. Yeah. It was so massive. Wow. <laughs> I really wish I was there. I've heard quite a lot about this hockey stadium, about it being like the best thing we've seen so far. So Pretty much. It pretty there. much was. There were some issues with it. I, I don't know if... I would have necessarily thrown the other games in there because while I think that the crowd was supportive of Street Fighter and Quake, just because, you know, they were pretty polite and Swedes are fairly polite, the the setup was kind of awkward for people on the stream and the host made things a bit awkward as well, unfortunately. Yeah. So that I don't think the Quake guys and the Street Fighter guys really got what they deserved there. I think that it might have made more sense to have them on in the extreme with a dedicated audience, with a host that knew what he was talking about, and just given them all the time they needed, as opposed to kind of shoehorn it in between StarCraft. Makes sense. I don't know how comfortable that was for them. I mean, I haven't spoken to the the guys, and maybe they thought that it was a really good idea, but I think that it, it could have probably been conducted a bit better. But hopefully some people have actually watched those games and got an impression for how good they are, because Quake and Street Fighter, I think, are great spectator esports, and they have a lot of value as games, and I'd like to see more of that. I just don't know if we should necessarily be mixing sports into the same event. Quake yeah. is definitely my favourite spectator esport, without a doubt. I love watching Quake. I just, but it's one of those games you need to really kind of understand what's going on before you can appreciate it. I suppose it's the same. I think you can game, understand it quite easily, though. Yeah, you can. You it's can. quite quickly. I mean, the the principles of it, especially when it's explained by a really good commentator, like say Too Good. Too Good does a great job of explaining. I it, within a couple of minutes, I realized the importance of armor timings and things like that, yeah. and the way that the map's controlled, and the way that you get an advantage just by your position on the map relative to the other guy, and how you can force a player to go in one particular direction, and obviously managing the weapons that you have and grabbing the power-ups at the right time. That stuff is impressive, as is the sheer skill involved in it. The fact that you make impressive shots and you dodge other shots. And I think that anyone can understand that pretty rapidly, as long as yeah. it's properly explained to them. Do, does anybody remember something? It's, I'm, it's a bit of a tangent, but it's... <laughs> it was a painkiller, Bloodlines tour or something like that. They casted Little that... It, yeah, CPL. it wasn't actually streamed. Yeah, it, was, it was qualifiers for CPL or something. Zacubus was in it. Um, he finished eighth. He did well to get in it. Fine. In, yeah, in, the final, in, New York. But um, anyway, so, it was before you actually streamed. So what he did is he put it on the demo disc. I got it with PC Gamer. It's before I actually played games, and I put it in. And what happened is on that stream, what they they had like a map overview, and they actually spoke about the map before they played it, and they talked about really the weapons. Idea. That I thought that was really really good. I mean. I know it's not as important for StarCraft because you kind of do say where the manual patches are and stuff, but... You've I got think the time all, in StarCraft yeah. to talk about that stuff exactly. because the first Star. few minutes are generally quite... You know, they're quite relaxed in terms of there can't be all that many things that happen. But in something like Painkiller, where it's going to be action from the start, explo explaining the map is really important, I feel. It's, it's vital to know about that, and the map does change an awful lot about how the game plays out. It was a really good setup, really good. Mm -hmm, yeah. I'll be good. Um, but, uh, during the, um, you, you know, saying you were saying all the Swedes are very uh, polite with all these other games. I thought they were putting off the casters quite a few times uh, during the final, and they all started shouting hello. Oh, that, that, that was putting <laughs> off their doses a bit. Yeah, that was quite funny. <laughs> Apparently, that's a dream hack thing. And the thumbs up was quite amusing as well. I think Apollo had the biggest power trip I've ever seen him on at any point. <laughs> It's like when he suddenly realized he could make 4,000 people hold their thumbs up in the air and wave them around. <laughs> Ooh, this, this is a new button for him to play with. <laughs> oh my God, did he push it quite a few times. Uh, exactly, exactly. But I'm glad yeah. you said Apollo. I've got to get his car scrapped. It's still sitting outside my house. Oh, the, the Apollo's me? Hellion, man. It's, it's gone up in flames. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's buggered. It's blue flames fucked. Yeah. Oh my God. I'll come down uh, and pick it up and do it up and have it for my own car if you don't mind. Come, come. Just <laughs> it. It's it, 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 we don't know that he actually runs a chop shop. <laughs> <laughs> I might look that tight, but nah, I'm afraid. 
during the final where uh, I mean you was you had the casting couch uh, for yeah. all the cocktails, um uh, which was fun. I, I really I think that's a good addition. Uh but uh, some people were getting a bit um Larry <laughs> wouldn't you say? I'm uh, uh, sorry, define Larry. Um trying to lick the screen at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Starting a fight after the fight. A bit wrestling between a few people. I think everyone was just drunk on the hype and excitement of the event. And that's all (laughs) I will say on the subject of that. The the casting couch was very funny during uh, during the games. After the games, I mean, for me, it was it was kind of awkward because the 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 structure of it kind of leaned towards well, if tasteless was on the couch, tasteless got the majority of the conversation if uh, if day nine was on the couch day nine got the majority of the conversation and it was handed to him as well so it was kind of hard for bitter and me to get, get a word in edgeways things i didn't really have anything to contribute I mean, it would have been nice if i'd been able to just sort of if i took the mic from the casters and then rounded up the game in a really simple fashion and then asked the analysts what they thought and then that would have been more comfortable for me but during the games it was the funniest shit i mean i wish you guys could have heard the things that were said but i have a feeling we'd never get employed again if you <laughs> if you did hear what was being said during that but it was it was a good experience just to lay back and watch some games and talk with the other commentators casually in the way that we don't usually get to do yeah no it was very cool anyway we're going to go quickly to ads and we'll be right back <laughs> 